We all love to tell ourselves that the reason that we choose the job that we have, the car that we drive, the house that we own, the goals that we choose to pursue, and sometimes even the significant other that we have is because we desired it ourselves. But what if I told you this wasn't the case at all? See, two, three months ago, I started to have a crisis of desire myself. At the beginning of the year, I set the goal of doing a Ironman, full Ironman race in November of this year. And I completed a 70.3 in December of last year. I was feeling really good after it. Got a lot of congratulations from it. And shortly after the new year, I said I want to complete a 70.3. Or sorry, a full Ironman. And so for the first five months of this year, I was training for it. Running four times a week, swimming two to three times a week, biking two to three times a week. And in May or so, I hit a really hard wall. Everything was feeling forced in my life beyond the training, but the training was a big portion of it. Was burnout. All my workouts were shit and just didn't enjoy the process at all. And at that time, or a few weeks later, I realized that I didn't really desire to do this 70.3. Or this full Iron Man. For my 70.3, I had a very strong internal desire to do that race myself. But for this full Iron Man, my desire was to get praise from other people. Or was for other people to tell me how impressed they were by me for doing the race. Rather than having an internal drive to do the race myself. And so this set me on a path to understanding desire, where our desires come from, why we desire the things that we do. And this pursuit of trying to better understand desire led me to a man named Rene Girard. Rene Girard was a uh, professor of literature and history at multiple universities across the U.S. Most recently, before his retirement, was at Stanford. And his belief was that our desires are determined almost entirely by other people. The truth is we come to desire the things we desire through imitation. According to Girard, humans learn through imitation to want the same things other people want. Just as we learn how to speak the same language and play by the same cultural rules from the people around us. Imitation plays a far more pervasive role in our society than anyone has ever openly acknowledged and realizes. Gerard calls this mimetic desire. And if we're not aware of this mimetic desire, it will take us many places that we do not want to go. My training for the full Ironman as a prime example. But if we develop the right social and emotional muscles in response to this mimetic desire, it can become a way to affect positive change in our lives. So this is going to be a two to three part series on mimetic desire because I have found it just absolutely fascinating. And it will go into a couple of different details of Gerard's philosophy of human nature and how we can get ourselves to desire better things in our life. So to start part one of this series, we're going to talk about how mimetic desire plays such a big role in our lives without us even knowing it. And the key part of Gerard's idea is that we all believe what he calls the romantic lie. 
the story that we tell ourselves why we make certain choices, which is because it fits our personal preferences or because we see its objective qualities or simply because we saw it and then wanted it afterwards. We believe there is a straight line between us and the things that we want. But Gerard says that the line is actually curved and buried in a deeper layer of our psychology is a model that determines our desires. A model is a person or thing that causes us to want something in the first place. And if you don't know your models, then they are probably wreaking havoc in your life. They are leading you to desire things that deep down you don't really want. Let me give you two examples of medic desire at work. One really simple one from everyday life and one from the Bible that shows how this is ingrained in human nature at a fundamental level. The basic one from everyday life is simply imagine going out to meet a friend for a drink at the bar. And when you arrived, you're completely set on just ordering a beer. But then your friend orders first and orders a martini. And you think, you know what? Martini does sound pretty good right now. I'll have one of those too. Your friend is the model in that case that creates the desire of a martini. And now the deeper story. One of the most famous stories in the Bible highlights mimetic desire at the very dawn of humanity. Eve originally had no desire to eat the fruit from the forbidden tree until the serpent suggested a desire to eat it, that she would be like God if she ate it. This is what models do. They suggest a desire for the things that we currently don't have. So suddenly, a fruit that she had originally no particular desire to eat became the most desirable fruit in the universe. This is mimetic desire at work. And if you look hard enough, you'll find a model for almost everything in your life. Your personal style, the way you speak, the way you decorate your home, you name it. You're being influenced by some form of model. Whether it's friends, family, social media, TV, or anything else that you consume. Because mimetic desire is social and spreads from person to person through culture, it results in two different cycles of desire. The first cycle leads to tension, conflict, and the breaking down of relationships from competing for the same desires. This is the default cycle that is most prevalent in people's lives. But there is another cycle that leads to creativity and productive pursuits that is good for the person and society as a whole. Before we go deeper into the two different cycles of desire, we need to first understand the two different types of models that we get our desires from. In the book Wanting by Luke Burgess, which talks about all this in much greater detail than I'm able to cover in these episodes, and I highly recommend you checking out, he explains in detail the two different forms of desire that Gerard talks about. The first is people who, what Luke Burgess calls, Celebristan. Celebristan is where models live who change our desires from somewhere outside of our social sphere in that we have no immediate and direct possibility of competing on the same basis with. These are celebrities, historical figures, or anybody else that is separate from us by time, geographic space, or social status. Because of the lack of possibility of competing with these models, we generally imitate them openly and freely. Think wearing Jordan sneakers. Nobody necessarily buys Jordans because they are the most technologically advanced shoe or that they'll make you jump higher or that they're most comfortable. They buy them because they make you feel like Jordan. The second type of model are people who live in what Burgess calls freshmanistan. These are people who change our desires from inside of our own social sphere. These are friends, family, colleagues, anybody that we interact with or personally know. 
these are the models that have the potentially biggest influence on us to the downside because of the opportunities for competition between you and that model. Think about you and a coworker who started at the same time and are competing for similar promotions or even the friend that picked up a hobby so then you pick it up and in the competition in that hobby goes beyond the hobby into other aspects of life, career success, fitness, you name it. We all live in fresh Manistan. People in our lives are affecting our desires on a regular basis. So each of us need to examine what this means in our lives and how mimetic desire manifests itself in the circumstances we're in and how we're living. And before you think to yourself that this doesn't apply to you, I would simply say open up your mind to the option that this might play a role because it's the moment we exempt ourselves in our mind from the thing we see all around us is the moment we are most vulnerable to that very thing. Mimetic desire is profoundly human and will always be with us. It's not something that can be life hacked away, but it can be something that we can become aware of and learn to steer ourselves into the second cycle of desire that does good. So let's quickly break down the two cycles of desire. Desire doesn't spread like information. It spreads like energy. It passes from person to person like the energy between people at a concert or at a party. This can lead to a cycle of positive desire where healthy desires gain momentum and lead to other healthy desires or it can become a cycle of negative desire. As a reminder, cycle one is the negative cycle. This is where mimetic desire leads to rivalry and conflict. It comes from a mindset of scarcity fear, and anger that makes us think that only one person can achieve their desires, so we need to beat the other person. Cycle two is the positive cycle of desire, where mimetic desire unites people in a shared desire for a common good. It comes from a mindset of abundance. To understand how either a good or negative cycle occurs, it's helpful to think about the flywheel effect that is made popular by Jim Collins, a business management consultant in his book, Good to Great. An easy example of a flywheel in the business world is Amazon. So if you think of Amazon, they are able to offer lower prices, which attracts more customers, which then attracts more third-party sellers, which then allows them to offer more products and get better rates on logistics which then grows their revenue while keeping costs relatively flat. By keeping costs relatively flat, they're able to offer even lower prices, which then attracts even more customers, which attracts even more third-party sellers, and so on and so forth. It is a self-fulfilling cycle. It isn't a linear process of continuous improvement, but a self-fulfilling process that begins to power itself the cycle ultimately feeds itself. Mimetic desire works the same way. It accelerates in a nonlinear fashion, either positively or negatively, where the desire will ultimately start to feed itself. Here's an example of both. A negative cycle. Think of your typical keeping up with the Joneses story. Your neighbor gets a promotion at work, so he decides to buy a new car. You decide you need a new car then, so you start working longer hours and see your family and friends less. Then you need to go on a fancy vacation because you saw someone post about their trip to Italy on Instagram. Then you need to buy the newest brand of clothes that everyone is talking about. All of a sudden, you're spending money you don't have to buy things you don't need to impress people you don't really care about. That is the ultimate version of the negative cycle of desire. But, like I said, there's also a positive cycle, which could look like this. Let's use fitness as an example. You want to start working out because your friend started working out and is talking about how great he feels and looks. That makes you want to eat better, so your hard work at the gym isn't for nothing. This leads you to turn down social invites that involve booze and unhealthy foods. 
This leads to looking and feeling better, so you start to want to go to the gym each day rather than eat unhealthy food and feel like crap. And then you have more energy and time to give to other things that you enjoy doing. Eventually, making healthy choices becomes something that you want to do instead of something that you dread. Mimetic desire is a powerful force that Gerard argues is the underlying force behind why we do pretty much everything that we do. So today's episode was about what medic desire is, where we get our models of desire from, and the two cycles that desires can transform our lives. I would urge every single one of you to stop and think about who your models are, what desires you have, and whether you are helping yourself get into a negative or positive cycle of desire. And next week's episode, we'll talk about how to actually transform our desires and get into the positive cycle of desire. I really appreciate you listening. And if you enjoyed it, it would do me a huge favor to share with a friend, like, subscribe, follow, whatever the button is on the platform that you're listening to. Thanks.